we made introductions and so I'm Jack, I'm David, I'm Charlie, what can I do for you? One of them said, we're here to look for wedding cakes, and the other one said, it's for our wedding. Jack Phillips owns a cake shop in Lakewood, Colorado. In July of 2012, he told David Mullins and Charlie Craig he could not make a cake for their wedding because it would violate his Christian convictions. So I'm, again, trying graciously, trying to tell them, sorry, I don't do cakes for same-sex weddings. I'll sell you anything else, you know, birthday cakes, shower cakes, uh, cookies, brownies, anything like that. But I don't do that cake. We didn't get much chance to talk about it because they stormed out of my shop swearing at me. We get pushed down, we get beat up, so our brain life's gonna keep us up against the ropes. But hang on this hope, cause if Christ is inside us, it won't be a fair fight, cause deep down we know how the story goes. The encounter that Jack had with David and Charlie started a six-year legal battle that ended with the U.S. Supreme Court ruling in Jack's favor. You're going to hear more of Jack's story on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. When the Supreme Court considers a case like Jack Phillips, it works to determine whether the law in question abides by the U.S. Constitution. Well, a little later in this episode, Billy Graham will share a teaching about that. The United States has a constitutional government. So the Bible is the constitution of Christianity. And the Bible teaches that the only way to find peace in this life and live forever in heaven is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we can tell you more about that at this website, findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. GPS. God. People. Stories. Years ago, when Jack Phillips decided to open a bakery... He knew immediately that he would call it Masterpiece Cake Shop. Masterpiece says art, cake shop says cake, so you know you're not going to go in and get a loaf of bread. But then Masterpiece also um, reminds me of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, because by the time I'd come up with all that, I'd become a Christian. Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, said that no man can serve two masters. And so it reminds me as I write down Masterpiece to this day that he's my master, you know, and, and This belongs to him. Jack grew up in a Christian home, but he didn't make his decision to follow Jesus Christ until he was in his 20s, and he already by that time had a wife and two children. I worked a night shift at the bakery, and as I was heading home from work, um, I was just driving in my car, going home, just a regular day, and uh, I suddenly just felt the Holy Spirit, you know, just like this supernatural presence of the Holy Spirit in my car. And he convicted me of my sin and that I couldn't stand before the Father with uh, any kind of sin in my life. So I tried to negotiate with God right there and say, you know, like, let me clean my life up a little bit and you'll get a better deal. And he said, you can't. And I realized, he's right. You're right. I'm yours. And I gave my life to him right then. That was 1978. Jack had been working in bakery since he graduated high school four years earlier. He remembers a career counselor in high school asking him what he'd like to do after he graduated. And I told him I wanted to be an architect. And he said, you don't have the math for it. And he said, what's your next choice? I said, I'd like to be an artist. And he said, there's no money in it. And uh, so he's a real downer, real depressing guy. He's <laughs> like, you're just going to be a worker. Go find a job. And... Uh, I got a job at a bakery. A man that lived across the street from me owned a large wholesale bakery, a big commercial place. And I grew up with his kids and the family and everything. So he was gracious enough to give me a job there. And uh, I found right off that I really, really enjoyed it. Jack would continue working and learning his skill in bakeries until he opened Masterpiece Cake Shop in September of 1993. When we opened it up, Um, It was a small family bakery. When we originally opened, I did all the baking, all the decorating, everything. And then I hired a part-time person to help and then a full-time person. And it built up to 12 to 15 employees. And we had a a pretty solid reputation for good wedding cakes and good cakes all the way around throughout Denver. Um, I won um, four awards before all this from a a national magazine called The Knot Magazine uh, about weddings, and they named us one of the best, you know, cake bakeries in in Southwest United States, that kind of thing. So we built a good reputation. As well known as Masterpiece Cake Shop had become for its cakes, it would become much more famous for a cake it refused to bake. 
It was a cake for a same-sex wedding. Now, refusals to make certain kinds of cakes was nothing new for Jack Phillips. When my wife and I first opened the bakery, we sat down and, you know, these are some of the cakes that we won't create. Uh, We decided that we wouldn't create cakes to celebrate Halloween. And I know most people do Halloween or whatever, but I couldn't see my walk with Christ being used to do that. Um, So we decided no Halloween cakes, no cakes with alcohol in them anti-American cakes, cakes that would disparage other people in any way, including people who have asked me for cakes that would disparage people who identify as LGBT, and we don't do anything like that either. So it's always like the message that the cake promotes, not the person who's asking for it, which was key in the case with the two gentlemen. David Mullins and Charlie Craig came into Masterpiece Cake Shop on a Thursday in July 2012. It was a beautiful summer afternoon, and when these two gentlemen came in, I came out from the back, saw that um, somebody was, they were sitting at the wedding desk, and so I walked around, sit down to talk with them. Uh, We made introductions, and so I'm Jack, David, Charlie, what can I do for you? One of them said, we're here to look for wedding cakes, and the other one said, it's for our wedding. And so I'm, again, trying graciously, trying to, you know, tell them, I'm sorry, I don't do cakes for same-sex weddings. I'll sell you anything else, you know, birthday cakes, shower cakes, uh, cookies, brownies, anything like that. But I don't do that cake. We didn't get much chance to talk about it because they stormed out of my shop swearing at me at that point. And so conversation took about 20 seconds. About 20 minutes later, the phone rang. It was a horrible phone call. It's like, are you the baker who just turned away the gay couple? It's like, no, I never turn away anybody, you know, personally like that, but I did turn away the opportunity to make a cake for a wedding that goes against the core of my faith. And that's not a quote. That's just, you know, the gist of the conversation and profanity followed from them, not me, (laughs) and uh, hung up on me. And then another phone call between the two guys leaving 4.30-ish, we closed at six. I gotten five or six phone calls like that. And just, it blew up, and I just couldn't, you know, imagine why so quickly that had happened. When I got home, I already had emails that came in, same kind of thing. And then by the time I got up in the morning, I think I had 200 emails. And when I got to work, the phone was ringing when I got to work. And uh, it rang all day, nonstop phone calls like that. And then a complaint was filed with the Colorado Civil Rights Commission against Jack and his Masterpiece Cake Shop. Jack went before that commission in October of 2012. The administrative law judge there found that I was guilty of violating the Colorado Revised Statute. And uh, so then it went back, I believe, to the Civil Rights Commission to decide my fate, my sentencing. And they said that if I'm going to do wedding cakes, that I have to make cakes for same-sex couples. I have to retrain my staff in the error of my ways, well, change my policy, and then retrain my staff as to what the new policies would be, and then to report quarterly for two years to the commission um, on my progress of all my changes and all. So rather than start creating cakes that go against the core of my faith, same-sex wedding cakes, then we're not going to do any wedding cakes. So we were forced out of the wedding business by the state of Colorado. And that was about 40% of our business. So um, God's been faithful, and we paid all the bills. But I had like 10 people working for me, and at one point down to four, including myself. So it's been a financial hardship. But like I say, God's been faithful, so all the bills have been paid. I don't have to know how I see you turn this around. Throughout his entire ordeal, Jack has been represented by the Christian legal group, the Alliance Defending Freedom. It appealed his case all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, and Jack had been following a website to see if the court would take his case. He got his answer in July 2017. I was in my shop, 7 o'clock, had my computer on, watching. I'm wondering if they might even just put the decision to grant it or deny it off till the next session next year. But I see... On the screen, Masterpiece. Masterpiece Cake Shop has been granted. And that's an amazing thing. 
you don't just go to the court and they take your case. They turn away over 99% of the cases that are presented to them every year. And for them to grant mine was, for me, you know, phenomenal. But I really didn't have anybody to share it with because there was nobody in the store except for a homeless uh, guy that comes in all the time. And so I turned to him and said, hey, I get to go to the Supreme Court. And he looks back and he says, yeah, I got to go to court on Wednesday. <laughs> so, so it was pretty memorable. <laughs> Again, that was in July of 2017. The Supreme Court heard the arguments in Jack's case about five months later in December. The argument I would have to say was that I serve everybody, that I declined to create this cake because it goes against the core of my faith. We asked him to look at uh, the free exercise element and free speech in regard to the ruling against me by the uh, Civil Rights Commission. And the free exercise element was enough for them to look at this and say, this can be completely overturned right here. The attorney who argued Jack's case before the Supreme Court was Kristen Wagner. Jack is grateful for her and all of her colleagues at the Alliance Defending Freedom. I've watched them do their arguments and and talk about the case. And I know that they're really, really smart and they're really, really practiced and they're really dedicated to what they do. And then just watching when the way the argument works is the justices sit at the bench and they ask questions of the attorney at the podium. Like, why are you using this argument this way? They're saying this, why are you saying that? And so it's just a a chance for the justices really to kind of have a conversation with the attorneys and ask the attorneys what their defense is, why they're defending this way or that. And just to watch uh, Kristen field every question. She has to know every brief that's been filed, be able to answer the question compellingly, uh, completely, and in a way that uh, will show the justices this is the way you should rule on this case. Just to watch that was really cool because she's just so smart. The name of Jack's Supreme Court case was Masterpiece Cake Shop versus Colorado Civil Rights Commission 584 U.S. The justices released their decision in June of 2018. They ruled 7-2 to two in favor of Masterpiece Cake Shop. And Jack knows that God began preparing him for this legal challenge years earlier when he and his wife first opened Masterpiece Cake Shop. I know that had we not made those decisions at the beginning, which cakes would we, we would create and which cakes we wouldn't, that it may not have been as easy to know where to stand when this one came. Because, you know, money's tight and you can always use more orders and, you know, maybe you could do this or not, but it wouldn't, I couldn't have done that cake. God had given us the opportunity to know where our lines were drawn and gave us practice with the Halloween cakes and other cakes that have come up through the years that this is how far I can go, and I can't go there, and I can't do that. So um, that he was faithful in giving us that wisdom and that grace. The legal journey Jack has been on has been a challenging one for sure, but it has given him an opportunity to share the love of Jesus with lots of other people at both the national and personal level. Just last week I had a a young man come in who identified as gay, um, said that he struggled with, you know, some of these issues, you know, that's who he is, but it's still a struggle with him. And, you know, I told him some of the things that I struggle with, but God has sent his son to die on the cross and take those punishments because you may feel guilty, but guess what? You are. Guess what? So am I. But that guilt, the punishment for that guilt has been placed on Jesus Christ. And the payment has been made if you want to accept that payment. And so that's the short version of a maybe 20, 30 minute conversation between myself and this young man. And we've had numerous opportunities for things like that. He said he didn't know what to expect when he came in and started talking to me. This is what we're here. Jack Phillips hopes to get back into the wedding cake business next spring. His bold stand for Christ hurt his business for several years, but it was all worth it to him. What about you? Are you taking a bold stand for Jesus in your daily living? Maybe you haven't begun a relationship with Christ yet. Either way, we can help. Visit us at this website, findpeacewithgod.net. 
That's findpeacewithgod.net. And as for listening here, don't go far because Jack is going to talk about one of his favorite cake creations in just a minute. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. The United States has a constitutional government. So the Bible is the constitution of Christianity. Billy Graham. As the constitution is absolute, so the Bible is absolute. As the constitution is the highest law of man, so the Bible is the highest law of God. The Bible, the greatest document of the human race, remains a bulwark to national, personal, and spiritual freedoms. The Bible will always be the center of controversy. For many centuries, there have been purges and bonfires. There are Bibles in existence today that were baked in loaves of bread to keep them from the hands of God-hating leaders who wanted to destroy the Word of God. The Bible teaches there is a heaven. The way to heaven is by acceptance and trust in Jesus Christ. Today, you can accept the Christ of the Bible. You can know peace of soul and peace of conscience and peace of mind by at this moment letting Christ come into your heart by faith and it can be settled at this hour. You can find more information about asking Christ to come into your heart at this website, findpeacewithgod.net. And if you already have a relationship with Christ, you can use that website to go deeper in your faith. Again, the address is findpeacewithgod.net. Our guest on this episode of GPS, Jack Phillips, is known for making some pretty impressive cakes. We asked if there was one in particular that stood out in his mind. There probably wouldn't stand out to anybody but me, but what I like to do most on cakes is drawing or painting people. And when I get to do that and sculpting people, the Broncos went to the Super Bowl in 1987 with John Elway the first year that he'd gone to the Super Bowl with him. And I made a cake, a bust of John Elway, and that was like really way out there for that kind of work at that time. And, uh, you know, sculpting it, putting it away, bringing it back out, and, you know, it was a little bit larger than full size, but that was fun. And then doing, trying to make something like that that looks like somebody that you easily walk in and say, that's so-and-so. By the way, Jack humbly admits that there have been some disasters when it comes to his cake creations as well. If being faithful is a definition of success, then Jack Phillips has been very successful. We are grateful for the time that he gave us and for sharing his story with us. And we appreciate you for listening. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. A quick reminder that you can listen to GPS on the iHeartRadio app. Just search for GPS God People Stories. GPS is an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. Good news.